What did we look at last time as an idea? It was very closely related. In fact, I almost spelt it exactly the same way last week. What was the concept? A race is a comparison between two changing quantities. Impressive. Okay, so let's repeat that again slower. And you don't need to write this again for yourself. Like you had this in your book already. But we talked about rates. And rates are about when you've got two quantities that are changing in relationship to each other. So examples were things like kilometers per hour. That's a rate because you're comparing two different quantities. But importantly, we're away, so we're taking an initiative. You can possibly do it later. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're comparing the two different quantities, but importantly, this is what I want to emphasize. Um, these units, right? They're different. In fact, they have to be different because they're measuring different things altogether. Like distance and time are completely different concepts, right? So rates like kilometers per hour, or we even looked at like, say, um, dollars per book. You remember when we were looking under linear relationships and we said, okay, anytime you want to compare two different quantities, you can <coughs> draw um, a set of axes, draw a line there, and off you go. Okay? But again, you've got two different units that are being compared. Now, ratios are similar in that you're still comparing two different things. Bless you. But instead of comparing two things that are very different to each other, it's where you're comparing two things that are similar. They're of the same style. So ratios compare quantities with, and I'm actually going to say the word similar rather than the same, and I'll explain why in a second. Okay. Rates are about comparing quantities with different units, like completely different, like qualitatively different. Whereas ratios, they're about saying, well, I've still got two different things. But the two different things, I measure them in similar units. Okay, so here's an example. I might say, e.g., um, compare two different distances. Okay, so I might write say 80 centimeters, and the the typical um, symbol for a ratio, as opposed to a rate, which is like a slash, is a colon like that. Okay? So I could compare this with say this here. Okay. So maybe this might be the ratio of the length of, you know, the height of someone's body versus like the length of their arm or something like that. Okay? Uh, these are still <laughs> These are still two quantities that are separate to each other. So they're different things. But when I look at them, they're actually the same kinds of units, right? So they're both about length. Now being that you're comparing two different things that are really in the same neighborhood, right? I actually don't need to write the units. Ratios don't have units at all. Okay? So I would say, I would read this as 80 to 150. Okay? Now, here's a lovely thing about this. Ratios follow all the same rules as fractions. In fact, that's why fractions are called, if you remember this all the way back from year 7 when you did fractions, decimals and percentages, we call them rational numbers. Which doesn't mean, oh, numbers, that make sense. Okay, it means numbers that are a ratio between two different things, like three quarters, three to four. Okay, so I can, just like I simplify fractions, I can simplify a ratio, right? For example, eight I could 15. divide both sides by 10. That would be eight to 15. Same ratio, all of these ratios say the same thing. Okay, so. What can we do with these things? Okay, what kinds of skills are you going to need to demonstrate? Well, remember I said they're similar units. They don't have to be identical, okay? For instance, what would be another common way to measure someone's height, not in centimeters, but in... Feet. in well, you can go feet, you can go imperial if you want, or meters, like they're both common, okay? So I could have written this, I'll leave this, I'll still stay here. I could have written this as 80 centimeters to 1.5 meters. Okay, this is still the same ratio. I'm just using this skill we've been looking at recently, which is converting yeah. units. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, very good. So what I'm trying to get to is something like this. Like this is as simple as possible, right? And so if I got given this, the first thing I would do is I would convert the units to be the same.
once you've got them talking the same language, then centimeters, centimeters, do you notice if it was like 80 meters to 150 meters, it would still be the same ratio. It's just that everything would be 100 times bigger, yeah? It could be 80 kilometers to 150 kilometers for all I care. It's still the same comparison. You're just drawing a really, really big object, really big person, okay? So, the first thing you want to notice is that just like fractions, you do everything with these that you can do with fractions. Secondly, sometimes they don't come up with identical units. They're just similar, right? Like meters and centimeters. And if that happens, the first thing you should do is you should convert. Secondly, like you can see this path that we went down here, I need another color. This path that we went down from the top to the bottom is what we call simplifying a ratio. Just like you would simplify a fraction, right? But sometimes you actually want to do the opposite. You want to go from a simple ratio to something more complicated. So let me give you an example. Here's a question. I'm just gonna the question is, extrapolate, which means take something small, <laughs> but you know, extrapolate. Have that. you never heard that word? It's just kind of words that Have you never heard Sure. Extrapolate, okay. you never heard extrapolate means <laughs> infer <laughs> something general from a small amount of information. Okay. You're okay. not going to put that in a test, are you? Extrapolate. You should not do that just because we asked you. Yeah, when Wednesday double. I wasn't test. going to, but... <laughs> okay, so, the idea is, and as I get through the question, you'll see what I mean. Take a small amount of information and try and get something general from it. Extrapolate the number of girls in the school based on our class, based on our class, if I happen to know there are 989 boys in the school, which is not exactly right, but it's pretty close. Okay? So, how am I going to do this? Well, first I begin by saying, what does it mean to base a, you know, a, a, a generalization or any off of our class? Well, in our class, there is a ratio there's a different pair of quantities that will help me work this out. Namely, the ratio between the number of boys and the number of girls. Okay? Now when you have a look around, there's a grand total of five boys in this wow. class. Okay? Now, we, <laughs> we'll, dis we'll discuss the implications of this in a second. Okay? So what I want is a ratio of girls to boys. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a funny story. People in a majority you never notice they're the majority. Anyway, um, oh, girls like to boys. Okay, it. girls oh, to I boys. The ratio of girls to boys. If there are five boys in the class, then how many girls are there? I don't know. What's, what's there are twenty-four in total. Nineteen. Nineteen. Very good. Good job. Okay. So what I've done here is I've written this as a pair of ratios, and I'm going to try and make a comparison between the two. Okay. Now remember everything I said about over here, ratios, everything you can do with ratios, you can do with fractions. And if we write them as fractions here, that'll be more helpful to us. Okay? So instead of girls to boys and 19 to 5, I'm going to write this as a pair of fractions. Okay? I'm going to try and compare here, because I actually know some information here that I can add into this. Right? Do you have a number? Don't, don't give me the number yet, I want to think about this first. No, now, I was going to say the next person. Okay, good. Now, I, I know actually, well, the question tells me, I know the number of boys. Well, apparently, I do. So I'm actually going to replace this with the number of boys there are. Okay? Now, you can see, if I want to work out the number of girls, like, I'm just, this is solving equations from back in AM1, right? So all I need to do is to say, what do I do to both sides to have, to solve for, like, get girls on its own on the left-hand side? I'm just going to multiply through, right? So over here I have 19 over 5 times 989. Okay, your calculator should give you an answer for this, right? Uh, Someone got something? 3,758.2. Okay, so before we discuss this number and why it seems odd, we should round this down because you can't have a... Oh, well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, not numerically, okay? So I'm going to go with to the um, nearest whole number. Nearest whole number. And then I'm going to step back and have a look at what we've accomplished, okay? Now what we're trying to do is take this small bit of information that is easily accessible to us, right? This often is the case where it's hard. We've discussed the census before. It is hard and it's expensive and time-consuming to do a census. That's why we do it very infrequently. So therefore, it's like, well, if 
like, have you ever wondered if you hear on the news when there's an election coming up, they say, okay, look at the polls, right? Now, the polls are clearly not asking every single person who, can, who is of voting age, right? Because that's called an election. All they're doing is they're looking at a small bunch of people going to some areas, certain ages and so on, and saying, well, okay, what's the ratio of people who are going to vote this way or that way? And then they try and take that information and say, well, there's 20 million people in Australia. Therefore, what are we likely to expect? Okay. So this is the ratio I observed here in this room. And I tried to apply it to the whole school. What do you think of that number? It's a bit much. It does seem a bit much, right? Why is that? Why is it such an astronomically large number? Because girls are popular anymore. Well, I was going to say, because we've only got one classroom, so it's not like one yeah, very good. So, for example, we, we already pointed this out right at the beginning. When we looked at this class, we thought, really? Really? Okay. So this is not typical. In fact, if you, if you wait for 15 minutes and, my, and you guys go out and my year 12 class comes in, it's not quite, but it's almost reversed. Okay. So if we took a few more classes, the more classes you take, obviously, the more accurate you're going to get. But you could. I mean, we're, we're very, we're very, very, uh, we don't represent the entire school, which is why this number is completely out of whack, okay? But you can see how, well, you know what? People in the polls, they do this all the time, right? Would you be surprised if they went to a particular area of Sydney and they just polled all the random people who came by? Well, they might get a result that looks like this. And then we listen to the news and the polls say this. Yeah. I believe there are more boys. Yeah, okay. Well, we're trying to see how ratios can be used. The problem is not the process. The problem is actually, this is the problem, right? Yeah, it's the sample, right? Is the particular, well, we're going to look at more of this under data and statistics. So that's the issue with using flawed data. Well, the sample size is here's, here's the difference, right? The difference is, like, all of this logic is sound. This logic is sound. If I found some class that was the perfect, like perfectly represented the typical cherry root class, then we get exactly the right number out the other end. But I figured it'd be a bit silly to take another random class when we have a class sitting right here, and it brings up this interesting discussion about why on earth this number ends up where it is. Okay?